close your eyes. Now, I want you to think about the most famous painting in art history. Are you picturing Mona Lisa? Yeah, right, okay. Now, think about the second most famous painting you know. Open your eyes. Was I right? This one, as you may already know, is called The Scream and was painted by Norwegian artist Edvard Munch in 1893. How do you feel looking at it? Uncomfortable, but at the same time hypnotized? For more than a century, this allegory of pain and panic has been reproduced, caricatured and parodied to become a touchstone of pop culture. From the terrifying mask of the movie Scream to the poster for Home Alone, the spine-chilling painting even has its own emoji. Somewhere between extreme impressionism and early expressionism, there's this hairless, browless, alien-like figure standing on a bridge. Blank-eyed, mouth wide open, his distorted body twirls like a wave of distress. Is it a man? A woman? Is it even human? I don't know why. I just didn't understand it when I was a kid, but I kind of relate to it now in a way. In the way that life around me is kind of distorted sometimes. Some art historians suggest Munch might have been inspired by a Peruvian mummy he saw at the World's Fair in Paris. It might even be Edward Munch himself. Reminiscing about the scene, he writes, I was walking along the road with two friends. The sun was setting. Suddenly the sky turned blood red. I paused, feeling exhausted and leaning on the fence. There was blood and tongues of fire above the blue black fjord and the city. My friends walked on and I stood there trembling with anxiety. And I sensed an infinite scream passing through nature. Hence the original title of the work the scream of nature, because contrary to what is often assumed, the scream does not necessarily show the screamer. Some experts actually believe that the image shows the figure hearing a scream instead. The scream itself seems to be distorting all the nature elements, like a shockwave, or maybe it reflects the troubled mental state of the main figure. Only the bridge seems to resist, with its linear planks and thick, straight banister. Everything else is filled with sinuous lines and vivid colors, red, blue, orange, and green, depicting the Oslo Fjord and a disrupted sky above, reminiscent of Van Gogh's La Nuit Etoile. An American astrophysicist suggests the spoiling sky might have been caused by the cataclysmic eruption of the Krakatoa volcano in 1883, whose ashes tinted European skies red. Edward Munch completed several variations of it with pastels and pencils and even a lithograph. Two of them have been stolen and later found which shows how much fascination this work of art holds. <laughs>